Well, here we are at the Toyota Corvette dealer. Here's the new rig, boys. What? 2023, brand new, fresh off the lot, what? Oh man, this thing is sick. Hybrid. Oh, it's locked. Oh man. Oh, new car smell is real. It's real. Let's see, odometer. 14 miles on this thing. Look at that. Sick. Oh, I can't wait. Let's see how big it is though. Since we had to buy it sight unseen. Wow. Oh man, the trunk is huge. Oh, this is sick. Listen to that. No gas engine. We're driving completely on electric. This is sick. Another Prius out here. I think it's an LE though. Look at the wheels. This thing is sick. Got another Rav, dude. So yes, I now have the new daily. So a little bit of details on the rig. It is a 2023 Toyota RAV4 hybrid LE. It's got a couple little add-ons, the blacked out badges, like floor mats, a couple little trinkets and gizmos that they get you on the end. Oh yeah, but you know, if you're gonna drive it in the salt, you know, you really want these like baller floor mats, blah, 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 right? They upsell you at the very end. I absolutely love this thing. It is a fantastic rig. I already put 500 miles on it. So yes, that is the new rig. It was 35 G's and I know that some people are gonna instantly default to this mindset of, oh, if I, why would you buy such a stupid vehicle for 35 grand? If I had 35 grand, I'd go buy an RX-7 FD, a 370Z, right? There's gonna be those people and they just don't understand. They don't understand the dad life. They don't understand the responsible life. They don't understand making good decisions in life, right? Everything is just a contest. Everything's a game, right? I needed a daily. I needed something large. Well, not like minivan large, but I have two big dogs, a kid, and I want good MPGs. There's not many vehicles that kind of, you know, fit that profile. And so a couple concerns about the rig, about the RAV is obviously um, this generation started in 2019 and they did have a recall on the earlier one. So I think it, don't quote me on the exact years, but it was 2019 and 2020, I believe that were affected by this issue. So it's all wheel drive, but the rear wheels are electric only. There's no drive shaft from the gas engine to the rear wheels. So the early one, the earlier ones, 2019, 2020, electrified only because the non-electrified models where it is all wheel drive still, but there is an actual drive shaft and a transfer case and all that other stuff. So this one, obviously the hybrid and the prime, they do not have a drive shaft from the front to the back. So the rear wheels are powered by electric only. And the 2019 and 2020s had a recall where the connector, like the thick orange cable that goes to the back, where it meets the diff, where it actually plugs into the diff, the connector would collect salt water, it would corrode the uh, contacts, and then, I don't know if someone's caught on fire or not, I saw this video, I'll, I'll put the video up on the screen, this guy, he is my go-to source for good Toyota information, and he was saying that maybe someone's caught on fire once or something. It was this big thing. Everyone's like, oh, do not get the new generation RAV. It will catch on fire. So um, in 2021 and moving forward, they completely redesigned the connector. So water and salt 
grime stuff can't collect in it because before it was like open on one end and then sealed on the other three sides now it's just open so you know it that's their fix for the solution and all the ones that got recalled all they did was cut out like the recall literally was to cut the connector out like where it would like hold water they just cut it out so all the earlier ones that got the recall done that's how you tell right off the rip you climb underneath the back and I think the earlier ones also didn't have a shield over or under the rear diff, I should say, whereas the newer ones do, and they have the updated connector type. So I have a 2023 brand new, the thing gets phenomenal MPGs. So the EPA estimates it at 38 highway and 41 city. And in my experience, those figures are low. Those figures are super low. Those... I was able to manage those figures, but I'll put up a clip on the screen right now. My figures were way higher. Like I was camping the fast lane through traffic, averaging probably between 60 and 70 miles an hour. You guys know how traffic is, right? It kind of slows down a little bit, then it picks back up, then it slows down. So I'm in the fast lane kind of bobbing between 60 and 70 miles an hour. I'm getting well into the 40s MPG. So I don't know. I think that the MPG figures from the EPA and from Toyota themselves, they shoot low so that you're really, really mind blown when you actually get it. Because I was able to get 38 miles per gallon highway at 80 miles per hour. Like I was romping on it. And that's how I got 38 miles per gallon on the highway. So you can hyper mile it so easy if you just big tow it because there's a gauge on the left side of the gauge cluster it's like an eco gauge it's like eco on the bottom power on the top and if you feather the throttle you could get it to sit right below the eco line and the mpgs are astronomical for a vehicle that large so yeah i'm super excited about the purchase i'm also really happy that this model is kind of it's pretty well tested there's already ones that have 100k 150k 180k like Dudes be Uber, Uber driving these things and have dumb mileage on them already because the engine, the trans, the hybrid system, all that stuff is already well established. Whereas the new Prius is a completely redesigned system from scratch, not quite tested in the general public yet. Whereas this generation of RAV, everything's tested, everything's proven, everything's seeming to last a long time, right? Hybrid batteries are good, inverters, the engine itself, all that stuff is good and... The interior is super nice, the exterior is super nice, I absolutely love it. I think it was a fantastic purchase, especially because I just don't know of any other vehicle that is that size where you can get 40 plus MPG. So that's just absolutely ridiculous to me. So yeah, I don't really have any plans for it. I do wish to keep it completely stock. I'm not going to lift it. No big tires, no stupid stuff like that. I'm going to leave it stock. I'm gonna daily it, we're gonna go on road trips with it, we're gonna use it for what Toyota wanted you to use it for, right? It's a RAV4, RAV, Recreational Activity Vehicle Four Wheel Drive. So we're gonna take it on mad road trips, we'll take it up to the cabin, take it to Katahdin, take it, I don't know, out of state, all that stuff. So I do plan to have it for a long time, but obviously who knows what the future holds. Um, but I do like how stealthy it is because it really does just blend in when you're just in public, right? It's not like a new Lexus or like a, I don't know, some fancier car, G-Wagon. It's not like that where people kind of look at you like, oh, that guy's rich. Like when I see like a brand new Lexus GX or brand new, uh, what is the Land Cruiser version of Lexus? I don't even know. What is it? LX, LX570, something like that. You're like, okay, this dude is driving an $80,000 rig. He's got to be a doctor, dentist, some shit like that. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. But the RAV in silver just absolutely blends into public it is fantastic for that purpose and the blackout badges they look real good they kind of keep it stealthy you don't really know from looking at it it doesn't have the hybrid badge on the side on the front of the fender either so you don't even know it's a hybrid unless you know really where to look because there's only one hybrid badge on the whole thing and the toyota emblems have a blue halo around them. That's how you know it's a hybrid or at least a, like a prime or a hybrid. So another cool thing I discovered about it as well is that if you're really gentle on throttle, you can pretty much get unlimited MPG in the city because you can actually keep it in electric mode. It will automatically switch to the gas engine if you apply too much accelerator. Like it's not based on the speed. Like it's not like 
you take off from a light, it's electric. When you hit 30, it's gas. Like you could run it all the way up to like 50, 60, 70 miles an hour in electric only. Like it has a good size battery and the hybrid system is fantastic. So you can actually get away with not burning gas in the city. Like you could technically get unlimited MPG and obviously once you get up on the highway, you gotta catch up the traffic, you give it a little bit more snot, then the gas engine kicks on and you get that nice big rush of power. And the thing's kind of fast. The thing is actually kind of fast because we went to some sushi restaurant. I had me, my girl, the baby, my mom, my sister. We were all in it. No one was expecting it. I pulled out of the restaurant. It was like slightly uphill and I just hammered on it and I watched everyone get plastered to the seat. Like it's actually quick, especially fully loaded. It has pretty good torque off the line. So I hate to say it, it's definitely the fastest car that I own at this moment. And like maybe third or fourth, maybe fifth fastest car I've ever owned period. And it's funny cause it's just a Toyota SUV, but technically the RAV4 Prime at this moment, I believe is the fastest vehicle that Toyota fully produces because everyone's like, oh, the Supra though, blah, blah, blah. It's half BMW, whereas the RAV4 Prime is full Toyota. Toyota did everything, the body, the engine, the batteries, the trans, all that stuff Toyota actually did. So technically speaking, a RAV4 Prime is Toyota's fastest production vehicle that they make from scratch themselves and don't have any help from uh, another car company. So the RAV4 Hybrid kind of follows in those footsteps. Obviously the battery's not as big and you don't get the 50 miles of uh, only electric range or whatever, but it's still fast. The MPGs are incredible. It's, it's large, dude. I can fit everything that I need in that thing and it still gets good MPGs. So yeah, that's the new daily. I'm sure some of you guys guessed what it was gonna be. I made it pretty obvious that I, I literally said in that video, I was like, oh, I filmed something about it like eight months ago. It was called like, which SUV you should buy or something like that. So yeah, definitely expect, you know, most of the vlogs that I film in the car, we'll start filming them in the RAV. I'll obviously film when we go on adventures, state parks, stuff like that. I think it's gonna be a super fun daily to have. And uh, I'm hoping that, you know, knock on wood, that it stays reliable for a long time. I'm just absolutely sick of dailying like shit boxes. I really am. So I'm happy to finally have my first brand new car ever. I've never owned a true brand new car. So this is my first one. I'm super excited about it. The thing rips, MPG is fantastic, fits everything that I need. And it looks good. In my opinion, it's really good looking. It's got like the mean front end on it. So, and like while looking good, it still kind of blends into the public, right? It's really gray, man. Like no one looks twice at a silver RAV4. It just kind of sneaks by any attention. So that's another reason I really like it. I love the thing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. With all this being said, thank you for watching. Peace out.